In this video, we're going to see how to set up the data set and the holdout sample data set to do time series forecasting. The time series we have here are West Texas Intermediate Price of Oil in dollars per gallon, unadjusted for inflation, on a monthly basis. Creating a time series plot, we see that oil prices have been rising over time. Uh, but there are, of course, some seasonal factors which we suspect are by month, since after all this is a monthly time series. So let's get ready to set up a data set. We have the number of observations, the date on a monthly basis, price of oil, uh, which month uh, of the year this observation was from, and here you have 12 dummy variables that takes the value 0 and 1 depending on which month you're in. You obviously want to take a look at the formula to see how these dummy variables are created. Down the road, I'm going to try and explain the price of oil this month by the price of oil perhaps in the last four months. So we have here lag prices by lag by one month, two months, three months, four months. The way to create this is go to data utilities, go to lag. Notice I'm using the raw data set. I would click on the button for WTI prices and I would then see that I would choose a number for the number of lags which is 4. I'm not going to press OK here because I don't want to mess around with this data set but you should and see how it's actually done. Now what you want to also do is take 15% of this data set, original data set and take 15% randomly, just take out 15% observations randomly and use it as a holdout sample to stress test my regressions. The way to do this is of course to create a column of random variables or random numbers and I now take this data set and bring it over here. It's the exact same data set you see over here. Now, what I next did was I re this data set from the highest value of the random numbers to the lowest value. And then I remind myself that there are 291 observations in the data set. I would like to retain 85% of them, which are 247 observations for use in building my models. And the remaining 15% are going to be used in my holdout sample to stress test my model to see how well they forecast oil prices. So what I did was I have retained 85% of observations. And you will notice that the remaining 15%, again chosen at random, are now going to consist of my holdout samples, which I now show you over here. Anyway, first of all, let's look at the regression data. I will use 85% of the original data set to build my models, which you see over here. That's 85% of the data. And then I create three worksheets. The first, they're all identical data. They correspond to the holdout samples for stress testing multiple regressions, stress testing auto regressions, and stress testing a combination of multiple and auto regressions. In every single one of these cases, the labels are exactly the same as the original data set, but the values that you see over here are the values in the holdout sample. So, what we're going to ask Excel to do is build a model and predict prices going back in the past and seeing how well it would have done given these. Uh, given this holdout sample over here. And if you scroll over to the right, you will notice that there's a column that records the actual uh, price of oil. Uh, I think I might have made a mistake here, so let's fix that. The actual price of oil should of course be read of this particular worksheet, which is right over here. And then, so what Excel will do eventually is, it'll stick the predicted price of oil over here, and then I'll take the difference between the actual price and predicted price to compute the error, square the error, sum it all up, and get the mean square error. And I should do the exact same thing over here because I made a mistake. The mistake is that over here, uh, I should have the actual price of oil for the whole lot sample, which I just click over here. We're almost there, actually. And the exact same intuition, when I test the autoregression model, I'll ask Excel to predict the prices, then look at the gap between actual predicted prices, the error, error squared, sum it all up and get the mean square error. And do the exact same thing, of course, for the last regression model, which is a combination of multiple regressions and autoregression. Let me just fix the type over here, make those actual prices, and once again, I'm going to ask Excel to compute predicted prices, compute the errors, square them, and compute the mean square error. That comes the next tutorial.